Today on the 1012 Podcast, myself, Chris, and Daniel with our final picks episode of the season. We're picking every Big 12 bowl game plus one, plus thoughts on Big 12 moving media days to Vegas, the latest regarding the transfer portal and the NCAA losing another court case, and a big Charlie Hustle deal. Welcome to the 1012, the podcast that covers all 14 teams in the Big 12 Conference Plus Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah. We are the flagship show of the 1012 Network. You can find every show in the network, a bunch of shows, at 1012network.com, T E N, the number 12, the word network. Find the show for your school. More shows coming. And we are partners with Sports Social, Europe's biggest sports podcast network. I'm your host, Philip Slavin. Thank you for joining us for one of our last episodes of this year. Um, After some thought and contemplation, just so you're all aware, we have today, which we'll be making bowl picks, uh, Sunday. (laughs) Make sure you're subscribed to YouTube because Sunday night at 8 o'clock, we are going live to do a a live taste test beer and Pop-Tart pairing uh, in honor of the Pop-Tarts Bowl with Manhattan Brewing Company. Oh, I'm excited. The beers are here. The Pop-Tarts are ready to go. The the stream yard is scheduled. <laughs> I can't believe someone actually bit on one of my weird ideas, and I'm so excited for it. And then um, usually we do a, a signing day episode on the Thursday after signing day. Um, we're not going to do that this year. I'm just going to – we're going to do Pop-Tarts. We're going to have fun, and that's how we're going to end this, this 2023-10-12 podcast schedule, and then we're going to – go off for the rest of the year and we'll be back in 2024 luckily i'm very excited that one of the last two episodes we're going to do is one of my favorite every year it is both a, a happy occasion and a sad one because it's the last time i will talk to these two guys for a while at least here on this show he is our pro picker our guru of vegas he is daniel alexander hey we're trying uh <laughs> About to step on a lot of landmines this week, but uh, we're going to do our best and hold our nose and pick some games. And I guess you're going to run down where we're sitting here. I know, I know we're, uh, we got enough games here to make it interesting. So I look forward to hearing the breakdown. I, I believe we do. I believe we do. I'll be interested to see if our other picker has a shot or not. He is the guy bringing up the rear. He is Chris Ross. Yeah, I, I get to come into this pretty loose. Got nothing to lose, you know, coming from the back of the pack. The problem is in today's uh, transfer portal, how do you predict any bowl game? This is impossible. Chris's strategy today, fire, ready, aim. A um, yeah. couple of things we want to get to before we dive into recap and picks. Number one, Daniel, uh, we're going to have to make something about this because the Big 12 reportedly, according to Brett McMurphy, will be moving Big 12 football media days to Vegas for 2024 and 2025 instead of holding them in Arlington like they usually do. Um, the general consensus I think I've seen on social media is everyone who covers the four newcomers is excited, and everybody else who covers the rest of the Big 12 is not very much so. Uh, apparently, there is a conflict with uh, in Arlington. I'm not sure how entirely how much I, I buy that. Um, look, I, I, this feels like the Big 12 found the easiest opportunity they could to put something out west for the newcomers as opposed to moving a championship uh, for any of the sports out there. So they're going to move football media days. Obviously, you're not going to lose basketball out of Kansas City. That makes the most sense. But they're going to move football media days to Vegas for the next two years. Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to try my darndest to see if we can get out there. So Daniel, I mean, I know you're in Vegas a lot, sir. We we may have to meet up there in Vegas in oh, July. It, it, it's happening, man. You, you get those passes. You're down there. I'll jam out for 24 hours. We'll... Uh... We'll do the thing, man. Sneak me into media day, man. I can, you know, touch Gundy's hair, get a little good luck for the season and uh, see what happens. I, I want to bring you in with a camera and a mic just so that see, just to see what nonsense you would pull uh, to try and get yourself lucky for the upcoming season. Um, we'll have, uh, we'll have more on that as we get closer to July. Again, I, I'm not a, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think I understand why, they're doing it, but we'll see. I mean, I heard it like I, I've been, to the one in Arlington and a couple of times and it's cool. I mean, Arlington stadium is cool, but I don't know. Vegas sounds fun too. 
you know, especially if it's at the Sphere or the uh, Allegiant Stadium or, or something like that, if it's a cool venue, then sure, why not? I mean, for most people who are going to it, like you're going just to do the media days. It's not like you're going because you're going to go like hang out in Vegas, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, the big story, of course, from Wednesday. Uh, if they hate the transfer portal now, buckle up, folks. Uh, West Virginia Judge John P. Bailey granted a 14-day temporary restraining order uh, in a case between West Virginia's Raekwon Battle and the NCAA uh, that will grant Battle eligibility, paves the way for more lawsuits in regards to second time transfer. So here's the whole thing. Raekwon Battle was transferring the second time. He is a player for the West Virginia men's basketball program. They went to court and the judge basically said for the next two weeks, we'll meet again of we'll a full hearing on the injunction that was set on December 27th. Until then, NCAA is expected to appeal. You are, if you are a second time or a third time transfer, um, you get to play. You, you are immediately eligible. Uh, that means that that was the ruling. They were not allowed to enforce the bylaw for the next two weeks. The image is definitely put out a statement saying, okay, uh, we will not prevent any multi-time transferring athletes from playing immediately. And we will not punish anybody uh, retroactively if they, if they do play the next two weeks, um, that's what's going to go down. So for the next two weeks, any multi-time transfer, whether the school applied for a waiver or not is immediately eligible. Uh, that's for basketball, big for basketball for the next few weeks, especially for teams like Cincinnati and West Virginia, who had some two-time uh, transfers. The reason this case happened is because Raekwon Battle put in the appeal. He had the reasons for his second time transfer aligned with the reasons previous people who had had their appeals seen, and he didn't, he didn't get the waiver. So he was just to sit out the air. Um, let's put it this way. Here's the big concern right now. Uh, the genie is out of the bottle. Pandora's box has been opened and the NCAA screwed up again because every time they try and cling to every little piece of power they have, they make things worse. Uh, it's really hard to see this rule getting put back in place. Like maybe it does. Maybe, maybe the NCAA will appeal and they'll win that appeal. <laughs> So I, I tried to do that with a straight face, and I, I couldn't. Um, which means, moving forward, if this is the case, if this becomes a permanent thing, anytime transfers and multiple transfers with immediate eligibility would just be the future of college athletics in every sport. So if you want to transfer every year, you want to leave a school whenever you want, you're not happy with something, okay. Folks, I'm fine with the transfer portal. I'm fine with giving the players power to, to relocate for a variety of reasons. If you... Please go to our YouTube channel. Hanin Rashawan, who works in the NIL department at Oklahoma State, was on. Like, we talked about this kind of stuff. We talked about this with Keegan Renault on a pod recently. Like, it's not all just about money. It's not all just about guys want to get paid more. There are guys who want to get paid more, and that is a portion for some decisions. But there's a whole lot more that goes into why people enter the transfer portal. But the ability to transfer as many times as you want with no punishment whatsoever, that's a mess. That is not sustainable. That's not even like the same as professional sports. You still have to play out contracts. Like there are still rules for that. It's if this comes to pass, like you're going to have to professionalize college athletics to that's the only way you're going to be able to, to rein any of this in. I'm fine with the transfer portal. I'm fine with NIL. I'm, I'm good with them. Being able to transfer as many times as you want with no punishment, wherever you want, like that is that is um that that is not sustainable. That that is that is the thing that will kill the sport that everyone else keeps trying to point their fingers at something else about. Like, this is not good. This would not be good. And it's the NCAA's fault because they don't deal with anything proactively. <laughs> they just do this kind of nonsense and lose every court case that gets thrown at them. Oh man. Um so that's fun. Uh so let's uh, let's just put that back away. We'll talk about that and deal with that in 2024 in a couple of weeks when this all comes down. Uh let's recap what happened the last time we were together for championship weekend a couple of weeks ago. You guys want to just talk about let's talk about this. Um all right. Chris, congratulations. If we make jokes about you bringing up the ruby, you won championship weekend. You went 4 and 2. You hit on Florida State minus two and a half in the ACC championship game. Hit on the under 35 and a half in the Big Ten championship game. Hit on Texas minus 14 and a half in the Big 12 championship game. And you had SMU plus four. I was so mad at you for being able to get that one. Uh, in the AAC for your G5, four misses were over 54 in the SEC championship game. And the over 65 and a half in the Pac-12. 
four and two on the week brought you to 53 and 60 heading into the final weekend or final uh, picks episode of the season, sir. Yeah, I mean, still below 500 quite a bit, but two uh, winning weeks to close it out. Felt good about that. So, uh, yeah. 10 and four down the stretch. Not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. Yeah, uh, bad. I came in second. I came in second uh, going 500 at three and three. Hit on Washington plus nine and a half against Oregon. Hit on Florida State minus two and a half against Louisville. And hit on the under 35 and a half in the Big, Twin, Big Ten Championship game. Missed on the over 54 in the SEC Championship game. We both did. That one was close. I think 51 was the final point total. Uh, missed on Oklahoma State plus 16 in the Big 12 title game. That one wasn't close. And uh, UNLV plus two and a half. Not right. Not the right call there. Not the right call there at all in the big, in the Mountain West Championship game. Three and three on the season brings me to 59 and 54 and puts me uh, one game up on Daniel as we head into the final picks episode. Daniel went two and four in championship weekend. Hit on Alabama plus six in the SEC title game. Hit on Florida State minus two and a half. The misses were Oregon minus nine and a half. Over 35 and a half in the Big Ten. Overs in, with Iowa, sir. Come on now. Uh, Oklahoma State plus 16 and Tulane minus three and a half. Two and four on the week, 58 and 55. Like I said, one spot behind me. That makes 59 and 54 for me, 58 55 for Daniel, 53 and 60 for Chris. So Chris is six back from me. I sit in the lead with 10 games to pick, y'all. Mm. 10 games to pick. Chris is live. I love it. it yes. Yes. You're not Barely. out of this. I, I, Barely. We talked about, I, I tried to pitch some, some crazy stuff to see it, to give you more of an opportunity, but you're not out of this. You're not out of it. So everyone's, everyone's in play here and it's bowl season, which means it's, it's nuts. It's insane. Throw all the stuff out the window before we dive in Daniel. I, we kind of talked about this before recording, but I want your thought, especially now with the transfer portal, Along with coaches leaving now, this time of year, um, recruiting going on when it is, this window that's open that, that kills bowl season, you just kind of have to throw the regular season data out the window when it comes to bowl games, don't you? Yeah, this is uh, this is such a severe exhibition where, you know, I mean, you said it, motivations all over the place. Um, who's playing, who's not playing? all over the place. You know, there's going to be games where guys who've never called a game in their life are given the opportunity to, you know, call a defense for a whole game, or there might even rotate guys who are calling plays on offense. Uh, Guys are going to be seeing reps for the first time. Now, in some instances, it can create opportunity. You know, if, if, if you have some information about a team, about guys, really, really the spot becomes, you have information about guys who are not going to play, not going to travel, whole units that aren't going to play. And uh, the news sort of hasn't broken yet. It's not out there. It hasn't been bet. You're at an advantage. Uh, you know, example we were talking about uh, before we hit record was Notre Dame, Oregon State, right? Notre Dame was around minus 10. Quarterback gets announced out. That just drops to minus six almost instantly. If you had some information about that and you knew that, there's an opportunity to make some money, but it, this is just such a landmine. I recommend anyone listening, like, you know, uh, unless you're really dialed in and you have some really good information that you like, do your best not to invest, you know, your mortgage money or anything like that on, uh, you know, on Texas State versus Rice, you know, because who knows who's showing up. Good luck to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> just... Throw it out the window. It's not going to do you any good. All right. uh, Before we make picks, one last thing. Today, I am introducing what we are going to call the WCI. That is short for the Who Cares Index. I'm going to give a Who Cares Index rating for every team as we go through here. Why? Because it sounds like fun and I want to do it. Now, understand, I love bowl season. I love all bowl games. Not every team loves all bowl games. And I introduced this because I think it's going to be an important factor in how I make bowl picks. And I'll be curious you guys' thoughts as well. So, y'all ready to kick this thing off? Let's do it. Let's hit it. All right. Last picks episode of the season of the year. Let's do this the way we do it all year long. We're going to pick every Big 12 bowl game and one big or one to non-Big 12 bowl game of your choosing. We go in chronological order. And this year, 
For the first time, as far as I know, the Big 12 will kick off bowl season on the first day of bowl season. We start on Saturday, December 16th at 8.15 p.m. Central Time down in Shreveport, Louisiana. The Radiance Technologies Independence Bowl, Texas Tech versus California. Texas Tech, a three-point favorite in this game. Total is around 58. Chris, as our big winner of last time, I was going to say last week, but last time, what's your pick, sir? Well, first, I got to know this who cares index of this game. Okay, I will begin with the who cares index. Um, I am actually going to grade both at about an eight. Now, I'm going to give Texas Tech a little bit high. I've got like a, like a high eight and Cal a low eight. Let me explain why. Cal is the first bowl game since the Red Box Bowl back in 2019. This is not a team that makes bowl games often. When you get teams who are not used to making bowl games, making a bowl game is a big deal. They're going to care to be here. Texas Tech, y'all, Joey McGuire has strong, I care about winning a bowl game energy. Like, head coaches, in my mind, who are motivational rah-rah guys, They care about bowl games. Bowl wins matter. And Texas Tech going to -to back-to-back bowl games, looking for back-to-back bowl wins, that's a big thing. So I think both these teams, this is a potential to be a a close game, maybe even a good game, because I think this is two programs that actually care. So I'm going to put both at an eight for who cares index in this game. Take it away, Chris. Nice. Yeah, I mean, both fighting for a winning season here. Um Unfortunately, I haven't had a lot of a reason to pay attention to a 6-6 six and six Cal team. Not sure where to get out of them. But entirely from the Texas Tech side, you have Brooks returning. You lose show uh, as far as uh, he's out. He's transferring, right? Uh, yeah, he's already committed to Louisville? Uh, maybe. Yes, actually, yeah. yes. Ty- Chuck, um, Chuck. Chuck's pretty good. Not that you care anymore. But Chuck, yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, I just, you know... I, 99% of the time I'm reading the names, not hearing someone pronounce it. So if I mispronounce something, that's on me. All right. But Morton's still available. I man, I like this game for Texas Tech. I I think I'm going to take the Red Raiders to cover this one. I'm pretty sure it's pretty low, right? Three-point game. Um, yeah, I mean, this would be nice weather down there, hopefully. Yeah, give me Tech. Yeah, every I say, mostly it's three. Um, there's some what do we call it? Juice up two and a half. I've got a circus got a two and a half, but it's at minus one fifteen. Wind's got a two and a half at minus. I mean, a circus two and a half. That's pretty legit, right? Well, yeah, it's, it's weird to me. Yeah, it's juiced up though, so you know, because three is that key number. So for it's prob- probably just ride with the three here for the sake of the pod. Okay. Three, it is, three it is. Cutthroat in the bowl season. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> 